are, these look like very difficult results for you. Why is profit down so much? Well, a year ago, we announced the intention to invest a billion pounds in the UK, and we've done that. So that's one important reason. And I'm pleased to say that's paying off because stores are better, uh, customers are noticing it, and trading's improving, with a lot more to come in the future. But there have been two other effects to our trading profit. The first one of those is the regulatory impacts in South Korea, it's our biggest market outside the UK, and we've been unable to open on Sundays and trade 24 hours. So that's had an effect on trading profit. And the other is the Eurozone. Our consumers are finding it increasingly difficult to cope, and so that's affected our central European businesses. So three impacts on trading profit. But there have been two other substantial announcements today that have affected the shape of our balance sheet. The first is a consequence of our strategic review in the USA. We're announcing today um, that we intend to exit, that we expect to be able to sell the business on to another party, and we're recognising the cost of that to the balance sheet. The assets that are there, we don't think we'll be able to realise the value that we put into them. So that's a charge of around a billion. And the, um, the final impact is we said again a year ago that we were going to slow down our property. In fact, we were calling an end to the space race here in the UK. And we've looked at all of the schemes that we have in the UK, and we're pulling out of over 170 of them. And so we've announced that the value of those needs to be written down. Last year, you announced a six-part plan to build a better Tesco in the UK. What progress are you making? It's good. It's really good, actually. Um, we're here today in Kensington, one of the stores that we've refreshed. And it's not just putting paint on walls. The product has changed uh, significantly for the better. The service has improved. Our colleagues have really you know, made what matters better. They have really started to focus on looking after product, looking after customers. There's a twinkle back in their eye. And our online businesses are growing very strongly, most notably our food business. So good progress. We've done three years work in one, but we've got a lot, lot more to come. And I'm, I'm very excited. Customer insight, what we've been doing is using the club card data and our capabilities from Dunhumby to personalize our voucher programs for customers. And that's been a really great success. So it's very targeted, giving people discounts on the products they buy every day, rewarding them for shopping with us. It's been, it's been great. You're announcing a UK property write down. Why? Global internet retail revenues were a trillion dollars. A trillion dollars. But 10 years ago, hardly anybody did any shopping on the internet. It was in its infancy. And many of these write downs, in fact, nearly all of them, relate to properties that we bought five and ten years ago when we thought that big stores would be the future. We'll be focusing much more on building our multi-channel credentials and customers in the future are going to want to buy what they want, when they want it, however they want it, from wherever they want. And so um, I think the winners in the future will be the retailers who focus on purely online or purely on store. It'll be those who can put together a seamless easy, simple offer for customers backed by a great brand. It's clear from what you say that stores of all formats are an important part of the multi-channel mix for you. But what are your plans for larger stores in the UK? Our strategy really for large stores is all about creating more of a destination. Thanks to Clubcard, we really do understand the reasons customers come to our stores. So we've you know, invested in Harrison Hall, a coffee shop chain, great coffee uh, and great pastries. We've been investing in Euphorium, uh, the best of British baking. And we've bought 100% of Giraffe, a uh, family restaurant chain. Really does appeal to uh, families. And that'll be going into these stores too. Some of them will actually reduce in size and we'll put in other retailers 
alongside as well. Complementary to what we do. So again, you make it more of a destination. And one of the reasons these retailers want to come in with us is our locations are brilliant. The horse meat issue is, is clearly industry-wide, but it must have affected the business. Well, it had an impact on me. I was horrified when I heard. And uh, you can see today, a few months later, how it's spread right the way across the Eurozone. So um, the fact that four of our products had to be withdrawn, four out of 18,000, is four too many. Uh, meant that we, we felt we had to take a, a leadership position. Uh, and that's why we've given so many undertakings to bring the supply chain back to do more testing, to invest more in British farming. You announced a strategic review on the fresh and easy business in the US. What decision has been made on that? Well, as part of the strategic review, we've been talking to other parties about whether they'd like to buy Fresh and Easy from us, and we've had quite an expression of interest. And, and that's prompted the board to decide that we would like to sell. And so we're going through that process now, and when it's complete, you know, we'll let people know, you know, absolutely what the end result is. For now, in the accounts that we've just released, we've reflected a write down in the value of the assets. Um, and we've taken one billion pounds of value and written them down. Moving to Europe, it looks particularly tough there right now. Are you worried about the businesses there? Imagine if you were a customer, uh, a citizen of one of those countries. So much uncertainty, so little economic growth. Our businesses there are a victim of that. And um, our people there are doing everything they can to you know, improve performance. But it's difficult when customers are constraining their expenditure. Hungary and Slovakia are strong businesses with strong leadership, market-leading positions. Poland and Czech, it's a little bit more difficult for them. You know, they're, they're in the pack, not leading. We hope that together, those four countries can make some good progress in the years ahead. And as I'm often saying to my team, when you're in the middle of something like the Eurozone crisis, it never looks good. Because when you get to the end, quite often, it feels a lot, lot different. And we expect that to be the case. What have been the challenges and the highlights in Asia this year? Well, for me, in three months, uh, I've been to all of our markets in Asia, and um, they're, they're great businesses. Um, Korea, Thailand and Malaysia, you know, market leading or a close second in the case of Korea. And were it not for the regulatory challenges there, the trading as restrictions, the Asia region would have driven great sales and profit growth for us. These are markets that are still fast growing, so I'm very excited about Asia. China is a little bit different. Um, Hypermarkets was the format that we went in with. We spread ourselves a little bit too thin, so we're in probably too many provinces. So we've scaled back our efforts in the last year to concentrate on building out profitable, sustainable businesses. You've made absolutely clear your focus on multi-channel. Mm. What progress have you made this year on that? Well, I'm pleased to say three billion of revenue online this year for the first time. Mainly in the UK, but also in Ireland, in Korea, and now in Hungary, in Poland, in Czech, in Slovakia, in Bangkok, in Kuala Lumpur, and in a few months' time, in Shanghai. Brilliant. So our internet revenue is up 13%. I don't know how much we'll be taking online in five years' time. I know it's going to be more than we're taking today. And we've got to prepare the company for that. General merchandising uh, continues to be a drag on retailers. Customers have got less money to spend. What's your plan for GM? Well, I've learned from some of the best retailers in the world that the way that you win is you differentiate. And simply repeating 
you know, the offer of five and ten years ago isn't going to get us very far. And I think in 2012, the brutal honest truth is we did too much of going back, not enough of moving forward. And I've had the privilege to see the ranges that are coming uh, into general merchandise in the second half of the year. Uh, I think it will be a point of difference again. And of course, we did a great job 18 months ago in redefining the role of our clothing, of F&F. &F. And that's grown extremely well, up 9% uh, in the year. Turning to the bank now, what's the update there? Because it seems to be behind expectations. Well, it's not done as well as we'd have hoped for two reasons. Um, payment protection insurance, in line with all the other banks, retail banks, got to take another provision because claims are higher than we expected. And then the insurance market's been difficult for us and naturally for most insurers. But I'm very pleased with the bank that we've built and I'm very excited about the potential it has to be another point of difference in the UK and to help us to get the UK back to leading. So, you know, we're going to open our own current accounts in 2014. And all this builds on the launch of ICES and mortgages. You know, we said that we would do it, we've been able to. And they're, they're progressing quite nicely as well. And how will you continue to create value for shareholders? Well, the first thing is, you know, we'll grow the company. Growth is in our DNA. It's what gets retailers out of bed in the morning. They're taking more money in stores online. But shareholders also want two other things. They want return on the capital we employ, and they want a good dividend. And so we're going to create value by growing our top line, by delivering some profit improvement, by ensuring we give a dividend, and by getting a return on capital employed. That's really the answer. We invest a lot of money. Last year, three billion pounds. Shareholders expect that to deliver a return, which is why we talk so much now about the importance of capital discipline, of judicious investments, and of ensuring it gets a return. That's what we're going to do. This is really all about balance, a balance between growth, dividend, and returns. And perhaps, you know, in the past, we've focused a bit too much on growth, not, not enough on returns. But having said that, you know, We've created extraordinary value over 15 years because we've driven growth hard. Now we're saying, you know, for the foreseeable future, more balance to it all. That'll be good for shareholders and it'll be good discipline for the company. Every penny counts. What are you most proud of over the past year? I'm always pleased when I see innovation. And I look at all of our businesses and they're all really focused on it now. It's that point of differentiation that comes from doing new things. I think our resilience, the resilience of my colleagues, it's been a hard couple of years as we've you know, changed the strategy, changed the management, and people have bounced back very, very well. There's more collaboration in the company now than there ever was. We are taking leadership positions. It would have been very easy you know, with the horse meat equine DNA crisis to hide what we did. We found out what the problem was and we came straight and said, now we know this is what we're doing. That's probably the thing I'm most proud of. In a crisis, our people really stepped up. And, um, you know, I could talk about a lot of products and a lot of people, but as the chief executive, it's much more about how the business is evolving so that it can be a winner in the future. It's already a winner. It'll be a winner in the future because of those. And lastly, what's your message to colleagues all around the world? Well, you know, you'll be reading headlines that profits have fallen substantially, and you might be worried about that. Don't be worried about it. The trading profit reduction is a consequence of investment in the UK largely, and the Eurozone dragging back Europe, and regulatory challenges in Korea, three things that you all know about. The company is still financially strong. So whatever you read and whatever you hear, hear it from me. This is a strong business with a strong balance sheet and great capability. I think 
for me, the important thing to remember is you, you know, our colleagues are the people that make the difference. In a difficult time, you've responded brilliantly well. Keep on doing what you do and we're going to be fine. Um, we've got great plans, we've got great people, we've got great capabilities. We're in some of the most exciting markets in the world. We've got the UK coming back, we've got a bank coming in, we're going to be a multi-channel leader. And it's all because of you. So thank you very much. Believe in yourself, I believe in you. Philip Clark, thank you very much. Thank you.